Ladies and gentlemen, this might be the end of the Reverb Gibson Demo Shop. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Yep, that's right. This thing right here on Reverb.com might be coming to an end, or we're going to see something different happen to it. Because on Wednesday of last week, Gibson put this on their actual website, you know, Gibson.com, where they're not going to pay a 5% fee on every guitar they sell. The Gibson Mod Collection. Rarities, exclusives, demos, customized one-off and pre-played guitar mods. Expand your personal collection today. Uh, okay, then you scroll down. This is the demo shop, but on their site. Now, at this point in time when I'm recording this, there's only five guitars on here. We don't know what days they're going to restock this one, but they do have a different background, which is ironically a garage door. <laughs> and for whatever reason, when I think demo shop, I just thought it was like in some garage somewhere. But they're listing modified guitars here. And you can see this photo right here. We saw this get sold at the demo shop a couple of weeks ago. I don't quite remember this one, but to be honest, what's so special about a Bigsby on a Les Paul that has exposed studs? But this guy, I definitely remember that Explorer. And I don't quite remember that 335. Maybe we haven't seen it or it just looks different in that photo. So is this spelling the end for them selling on Reverb? Well, so far there hasn't been any public statement that I'm aware of that says one way or the other, but here's what I see going down. Gibson launched this demo shop, what, was it about eight months ago? I suppose we could actually figure that out just by going through my old recap videos. Wow, there's quite a few of them. There's some interesting stuff. But if you go back to my Thanksgiving Day unboxing from last year, yeah, that was nine months ago when they first started listing stuff in the demo shop. If I remember correctly, didn't it take them like a month or two after that to start listing more stuff though? So yeah, about eight months that they've been doing this. Is this the end? Here's what I'm guessing. No. They're going to keep the Reverb Demo Shop. Like, they were just initially using this to gain people's interest to see if this is a program they should actually do. Will people actually buy these guitars? But now that that market has been established, they're just going to leave, like, maybe the regular demo guitars on here that just have a few factory blemishes because those might be a little bit harder to sell just on their website. But now that everybody's all gung-ho crazy over their limited edition custom finishes, it seems like they might just start listing those here. So as far as the end of the fun of the Gibson Demo Shop, I'm a little bit scared. But I guess at the same time, they're just switching platforms. So what I'm guessing here is all the guitars that get some sort of a modification, a custom finish like this standard 60s, will end up here because it's unique enough it'll sell itself. Whereas the regular stuff might just sell on Reverb because they need a little bit more marketing behind them. I mean, why pay 5% to Reverb on every sale anyways? When you're Gibson, people will follow you wherever you list your guitars. I was surprised when they even launched this shop in general. So for the first Wednesday restock of this one, there were about eight guitars. They definitely lasted longer because nobody knew these things were out here. I didn't even see it. A viewer of the show actually sent me a link. And there were two really cool ones in my opinion. And we'll start with this one that's still available at the time of recording this. So this is a standard 60s in a Baja burst finish. They're asking a $300 premium on it. And it looks like it's very similarly laid out to their regular website listings. You can zoom in on here, but it appears that they're doing less and less with their description. They're just listing the bare minimums. They're telling you what they changed, what it weighs. But in my opinion, it doesn't feel like they're necessarily pointing out all the flaws as much. Like you have to kind of look for these other photos. And at this time, it doesn't appear you can zoom in on those. In order to view these, if you're on a desktop, just right click, open image, a new tab. And then they've got the full sized one here. I think they've got some kinks to work out here, but I love this. It's just like a regular Gibson listing. You can see everything get listed out. So if something's been changed, it's pretty easy to tell. Like this one, if you need to know the pickups, Burst Bucker, Burst Bucker 2, very easy to find in this list. I do like that upgrade, but I think they need to the work on their photos a little bit more because it's kind of harder to tell. But then again, to get the cool custom finishes, you just kind of have to accept whatever minor blemishes might be on these things because they sell fast. 
And the other one that was really cool was this guy, the Gibson Mod Collection Les Paul Standard 50s Intergalactic Crackle. I thought it was more so like a sparkle rainbow leopard print. It was kind of cool if you're going for like that 80s hair metal type band thing. I love the knobs that they put on it. They blacked out the hardware. It was one of the P90 versions of the 50s standard. It was just kind of a cool guitar, but this one was listed at a ridiculous premium. If I remember correctly, I think it was like $3,900. It was like a $1,400 premium over regular. But surprisingly enough, it sold really fast for being a brand new program. But once a guitar sells from the shop, it disappears. I really think they're going to modify this in the future, but right now, if you click on like search by body style, Les Paul, here they are. They've got a Gibson mod selection right here that shows you the sold ones and the ones that are still available. I'm guessing this is going to go away. This is just to get people like, oh, they do this. They sell directly on their website, these unique creations. But eventually maybe they'll put it somewhere else because if they're gonna list a whole bunch of guitars on here, you're not gonna be able to find the ones that they're actually trying to advertise that are brand new. <laughs> These are such larger photos, who scrolls down the page anymore? But nice, we can see the other one. So here's that 50 standard. Yes, I was about right, $3,699, $1,200 premium. Then there was also a Les Paul Access here that was all blacked out. A pretty cool 50 standard here with blacked out plastics once again. But the one I had completely forgotten about was this. Once again, going for that Galaxy stuff. This sold for $4,100. Wow. I mean, it's cool, don't get me wrong, but 4,100, that's like a pretty decent custom shop SG. And this thing, brand new, probably started life as a stop bar tailpiece variety. That's a, what, 1599? So that is over double. But it does have a really cool finish, and they changed up our Vibrola to one we don't normally see. I mean, this is a quality refinish. Like, they took the pick guard off and everything and hid the screws, blacked out hardware, kind of cool pickup rings. I wonder if they custom painted those or if they're just clear and you're seeing underneath the finish there. So this is what makes this one even more unique is the fact that they actually bothered to do the back. So I guess I can see it from that standpoint. It's not just like a black back or something they took some extra time here and did they do something to the headstock oh sweet <laughs> i kind of take back what i said they really went above and beyond on this one i'm surprised it sold as fast as it did for what it is but at least they really went all out on this and you can even still kind of see the serial number that's impressive then we had a junior and a standard so most of these have been modified in some way like this one you might be like what 1799 what did they do? They changed the tuners, duh. <laughs> Is that seriously? Seriously it? Like I was hoping we would have some custom boutique pickups in here. Um, yeah, I, th I think I'll just take the $300 discount and buy a brand new one. I, I, I don't understand that one. But the last one I want to talk about before we move on to the traditional reverb demo shop is this guy. I was tempted to buy this because it's just a regular SG, but they put double dog ear P90s on it. That's pretty cool. And it's an SG standard format, but they gave it the junior style tuners, faux BR1 bridge, hard shell case, not even asking for a premium really. It's not a surprise that that thing sold. But anyways, I had a lot of people asking for some clarification on this, and I'm sure a lot of people didn't even realize Gibson put this on their website. But yeah, it's there. Just type in gibson.com right here, Gibson Mod Collection, or type this into your browser. But now let's cover the traditional demo shop today. I've got about 10 guitars I want to look at today. There were a few interesting custom colors this week, but a lot of players grade stuff. First off, another one of these ES275s. I did review one of these that was marked a prototype a while back ago. If you wanted to check that out, it was a fantastic guitar. But the reason I wanted to share this one is, you know, it's just kind of nice and a very fair price. Like these aren't as popular as Les Pauls, but at $26.99, I can tell you that they play fantastically. So maybe check one out if you're looking for something a little bit different. They look really goofy in photos, but in person, they're not quite as crazy looking. Next up, we had an Ebony Lefty SG Standard. It seems they're going to keep producing lefties in the demo shop, so that'll make a few people happy. Especially when you can get a deal on a lefty. Most times lefties end up selling for a premium because there's just less of them out there. 
Last time we featured an SG Modern that had a ridiculous top. This one, it's not quite as nice, but I can tell in person that it would be pretty cool, but it's already sold and it was listed at $15.99, a $400 discount. We had another one of these Blues Burst ES335 dots, and you guys might be happy to know, I love this finish so much, I actually did submit a request to the Made to Measure program to make me a Les Paul custom just like this. I really, really hope that'll happen, because I want them to burst the neck, burst the back of the headstock, the sides, all that, in this beautiful ambered over blue burst. I still don't understand how they do it because yellow over blue equals green, so maybe they just spray the edges? <laughs> I really don't know, but I'm hopeful that they'll approve that request, and then we can do like a either a small run of them, or I can just get one for myself for a review and demo. But I love the look of it on this 335, and this one matched with an uncovered bridge humbucker. That, that is really cool, especially with the custom-made plaque that looks gold in itself. Pretty cool. Next up, we had this TV Yellow Special for a slight discount. 300 bucks off, essentially. All they did was change the pickup covers on it, but hey, pretty cool. You got different tuner tips on it as well. But now for the cream of the crop this week. This Silver Burst, that's not a Silver Burst. They called it Black Lace VOS. Sounds risque to me, but <laughs> essentially what it means is they have a very, very dark border here. And then it kind of fades out into like a moon burst is what I would have called it. I really like this. Like silver burst is a much darker finish. And at times this finish almost makes it look like a studio. Like that black border really hides the binding so it makes it look like it doesn't have it. Personally, I think this finish would look better on a regular standard instead of a custom. But to call this silver burst would not necessarily be correct. It doesn't look like it has any sparkle to it. This is not a metallic finish at all, so it'll be rather flat, I would guess, in person. But I like the staining job that they've done. And then they have it like a really aged looking bridge right here. But then the tailpiece is extra shiny. I wish they would have matched those. Doesn't look like they changed the face of the headstock too much. But then you flip over to the back, just like most of the demo shop custom colors. They just leave it black. It's easier for them. They can take their premium and run. <laughs> Those tuners look pretty aged right here too. But whoa, what's going on with that? Somebody was a, a little crazy making that truss rod cover. The silkscreen Les Paul Custom is like, it's not even just crooked. It seems to be curved. <laughs> I don't know. Must have been a bad parts batch that they just threw on a demo shop guitar because nobody can care. But this was a 2021 made creation. It's got some nicks and dings. Here's a nice close-up that shows that smoky finish. It still appears to be gloss, though. And we're getting one of the Lifton reissue style cases with it. How much did they want for it? $4,999. Seems to be about the basic price that they charge for these. My guess is we'll see this one get flipped on reverb. It was unique. I could have bought it, but I already documented that sparkle silver burst. I'm waiting for something truly unique and special. Like this is special, don't get me wrong. It's just not something that I wanted to do a review and demo on, so I let it go for someone else. Next up, we have this beautiful 50s Les Paul standard. It's got the regular stuff. You got a nice little top here, regular pick guard, regular knobs, all that stuff. Nashville style bridge. What? <laughs> this one was funny to me because that's what I thought when I first saw this. I was like, okay, 50s Les Paul standard. And then you get to the headstock and it's like, excuse me, did they put the wrong one on there? No, this is a Studio Premium Plus. It's an older guitar, but doesn't that look like a 50s Les Paul standard kind of top? It was listed at $10.99. It sold pretty quickly. And then this SG Special was kind of cool. So this originally would have started life like this one. It had a wrap tail piece, two P90 pickups, and the 61 style pick guard. So it's not the full bat wing, it's just the half style. However, they modified it with the full bat wing style, that's a moto pick guard, perloid material, but then this just seems kind of silly. It started with two P90s, so well, what, <laughs> why put a P94 in there? It's a humbucker size P90. I would have rather just had the regular P90 and then put the bridge humbucker in there if that's what you really want to do. So they really swapped this one up as far as the pick guards go. But I guess it's possible to do if you like the 68 style guards a little bit better. So basically just a swap pick guard and some swap pickups. And they gave you a $200 discount. Here's another one I thought was cool. Oh, what? I'm just seeing this for the first time. I thought they just put 
chrome covers on this one, but no, they didn't. It looks to me like they've put mini humbucker rings in the guitar and then they uncovered the P90s? I didn't even know that was a possibility. I suppose if they started as a soap bar, it would make sense. That's really bizarre because now these screws are just mounting the ring into the body, whereas these ones are mounting the pickup into there. I would really like to see that one up close. I, I never even realized that was an option. I thought these pickups were too big, aren't they? I mean, it just says they're regular P90s. What did they do to that? It's already sold, so I can't buy it to find out, but whoever purchased that, please send me some photos. I'm, I'm very curious and perplexed about that one. And the last one to talk about from the demo shop today is this. Peculiarly sold and then was relisted, so somebody backed out on this one. It's just a regular 61 style SG, but they swapped out the pick guard for the tortoiseshell look, and then they gave it different colored pickup rings, the cream. They uncovered the bridge pickup, they all golded this out, and I think it's the gold mixed with this cherry red finish mixed with this very dark red pick guard. This looks like a custom shop creation. I mean, you even get a little bit of gold and reflectors on the top right here for the knobs, that's awesome. That is a piece that stands out. Like the uncovered pickup matches really well with that pick guard as well. It brings out the darkness and then you got the lightness over here. And then the back, they just left it the same because there's not much else they can do. But that was a cool piece. If you were looking for an SG, that was you know, just a little bit more unique. So that is going to do it for our recap of the demo shop today. We'll just have to see what Gibson has in store for the demo shop, the mod shop, if they're going to keep listing on Reverb, if they're just going to move it to their website. Only time will tell. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.